Back in the fluid shape attributes, in the temperature section, we can make a couple minor adjustments here. We can maybe give it a little bit more dissipation, but no diffusion. So that temperature will fade out over time, but it won't spread. And then maybe increase the amount of turbulence coming from the turbulence here. So this is the amount of turbulence being fed into the temperature. And now we're ready to start playing around with textures. So scrolling back down into the shading section. Uh, remember that we've got incandescence and opacity. But currently they're just being driven by either a ramp or a graph. Going down a little bit farther, you'll see there's a textures section. And there's a built-in texture for the fluid shape node. And you can choose to either map the color, incandescence, or opacity. I'm only going to map the incandescence and opacity. If I want to see the result in the viewport, I'll have to select the viewport and press the 6 key. And we can actually see the texture now. So with the 5 key, no texture. 6 key shows the texture. Back in the fluid shape node, we've got the incandescence texture gain and the opacity texture gain. And we can adjust these to get different effects. So for example, this shows how much the texture is feeding into the opacity. That does, of course, interact with what's going on up here in the shading section. So under opacity, the input bias gives a similar effect. Back in our textures, there are different types of textures. We've got space-time, and that's good because it, as the name implies, changes over space and time. Rewind and playback, so you can see the effect of the space-time texture. We're using a texture to provide more detail, just like we would with a standard model. Except in a model, the shape is coming from the geometry. And here the shape is coming from the dynamic grid, which is driving the opacity from the density. So density is feeding into opacity. Opacity is creating a shape. And then we're modifying that shape by layering this texture opacity. To make this even more interesting, we can play around with the texture attributes. Scroll down in there, and you will see, for example, the frequency ratio, which has to do with details. Smaller details result from a higher frequency ratio. There's also overall frequency down a little bit lower, which is the overall size. So low values will be large, and high values will be small. We want a little bit better display in here. We can go back up to the display section, way back up here, and increase the number of slices per voxel. That'll help with that a little bit. So way back down, once again, in our texture attributes, I can play around with this frequency. And of course, I can use IPR, too. So I'll select these pixels and then play with that frequency. Let's go back into the shading and adjust the input bias of the incandescence. So we can see the texture better. So frequency. Low frequency will be a large pattern, and high frequency will be a small pattern. We can also stretch the texture. You'll see texture scale here. So if I stretch it in Y by a value of 2, it'll stretch out vertically. The texture origin is the placement. So if I change this to just a very small value like 0.01 and hit Enter, you can see it shift a bit down. 0.05 it shifts down more. So I can put an expression in here to drive this. I'll just right-click and choose Create New Expression. I'll take this fluid shape, texture origin, Y, middle mouse, drag it down in here. Make the text bigger with control and mouse wheel. And I'll set that equal to time divided by, let's say, 10, and then a semicolon. Create that expression. 
and then we rewind and play back, the texture is now actually flowing through the container in a way that wasn't before. We can put this in interactive playback mode, let that play through, and then make adjustments to, for example, our opacity input bias. Get that the right size for the container. The incandescence input bias. And play it through until I think my simulation is looking good. I'll do some test renders. You might want to do a play blast as well. But now is where you sort of develop the look of your shot and fine tune all the artistic details. So I've just made it brighter. I can maybe go back into the opacity and do something clever here, maybe. So I've played around with my fluid shape opacity curve a little bit more to give it a softer edge. And I think I'm happy with that. We can go back down into the texture attributes and take a final pass at those. For example, the depth max. Let's do an IPR render. Increase that up to maybe 3, 4. The higher this value, the more detail we'll see in the texture. And that does interact with the frequency here. So a lower frequency with an increased depth max give me a different pattern. If I want to add some more chaos to this, I can also put a creation expression in the texture time field. If I just adjust this, you'll sort of see what happens. It's it's causing the texture to churn or boil. It's like a phase attribute. So I can just right click on there and create a new expression just as before. Middle mouse, click and drag down into the expression editing area. And we'll also set that equal to a value of time divided by 10 with a semicolon at the end. Create. And as we play it, in our viewport, it should look pretty close to what we want at this stage because we've introduced chaos from the turbulence and we've also got chaos coming from the texture here. The texture time is animated, the texture origin is animated.